that we wrote quite some time ago. And then I left this little comment here. Additional methods will be added in later sections. And that's today. Um, so we're going to create a visitor interface inside of our tree class. Okay, we can actually do that. It doesn't have to be a separate file. It's closely associated with this tree. So it's not a bad decision to create the visitor interface here. So a visitor, visitor. Uh, so we're gonna define a visitor whose visit method is called for each visited node during a tree traversal. So public interface interface visitor. Ah, capital D visitor. There we go. Um, this is a pretty simple interface. It's going to have a single method. This method is called for each visited node. It takes one param, which is the data, and it's the data of the node being visited. So we'll just do void visit object data. That's it. This means that someone else can implement this interface and implement the visit method. And that method will be called for every node as the tree is traversed and the data associated with that node will be provided. And we can do everything from calculating the sum of the nodes, the average of the nodes, the longest string in the tree, the shortest string in the tree, whatever we want. All sorts of cool stuff. Um, So let's, in order for this to be useful, we need to add more code to our tree to actually traverse the tree. So we talked about that a couple of days ago, but we didn't write any code to do the traversal yet. So let's do that today. So we're gonna create a public method of this tree class. And this method traverses this tree in pre-order. We're gonna do pre-order, um, you all can, practice doing like post order in order stuff because it's pretty similar. Um, so it's going to take a single parameter V, which is the visitor to be invoked at each node. And so this new public method is called pre order one parameter of type visitor. As was mentioned, when we discussed this conceptually, hey, this sounds recursive, absolutely is recursive. So we're going to call our recursive helper method which is a static method. So we can pass it the root as well as the visitor. So this private static helper method um, will actually recursively traverse the tree in pre-order. Um, and in this case, we wanna start with the root. So we better document that guy too. This traverses the tree with a given root in pre-order. One parameter is n, which is the root of the tree to traverse. And the other parameter is v, which is the visitor to be invoked at each node. So this is going to be private. No one else needs to call this. This is our private static recursive helper method called pre-order. Takes a node and takes a visitor. So even though it was a little bit challenging for us to like conceptually understand in order, pre order, post order, and we did the practice with like the superheroes and we did the pair deck, um, the code is not too bad. So in pre order, um, well, first of all, we need to handle the terminating condition because we're doing a recursion. The terminating condition, the easiest problem, the easiest tree to traverse is the tree that has no nodes. So if n is null, we are done, just return. Assuming we do have a node, pre-order says we want to process, is the word I kept using, we'll now use the word visit. We want to visit each, we want to visit the node we're at first, pre, do it before, and then we will 
explore all of the children. So we first invoke the visit method on the visitor that's, that's provided, and we pass the data associated with the current node. We don't know what that visit method does, but we don't care. That's the beauty of interfaces. If it wants to calculate a sum and average, if it wants to do string processing, it can do whatever it wants. It now has access to that node's data. And then we'll go through every child. So for each child of this node's children, we'll call the recursive helper method, passing the child node and the same visitor. If we were doing post order, we just move this line of code after the for loop. If we were doing in order, that really only makes sense for a binary tree, right? So we do like left visit right. Um, that would be done in a different class. We'll, we'll get to that, so. That's it, that's what it takes to support visitors, which is pretty cool. Um, let me close some of these other windows. Let's see this in context, because it makes it a little bit better. Let's take a look at traversal data here. Um, what have we got here? So main method, we're building up that same tree. So we have Anne, we have Peter, this is child of Anne. We have Zara, which is a child of Anne. We have Savannah, which is a child of Peter. And so now we can actually comment out our test code. And here's what I've written as an example for us. I've written a class called short name counter, which implements the visitor interface. The visitor interface is declared inside of the tree class. So I have to do tree dot visitor, um, kind of like rectangle 2D dot double. Um, so here's my little class that implements this, this interface. I have an instance variable, which is a counter. Um, I'm gonna count how many short names are in this tree. I'm gonna find a short name as a name with less than or equal to five characters. So here's my visit method. I get a reference to the data. Now we did not make this a generic class, so it's of type object. Um, so, that's fine, normally it'd be like a generic and of type T, but in my visitor, I'm gonna print each element as we visit it. I'm then going to call toString, which gets it as a string, and then I'm gonna call length to get how many characters there are, and if it's less than or equal to five, I'm gonna increment my counter, okay? So I made a little short class here, little inner class that implements that visitor interface. Yeah. Is this how you search for files? Yes. Yeah, so remember like a, a directory structure is a tree structure. And so as it searches through, you know, folders and files in those folders, um, you can imagine visiting each of those and doing some sort of a search operation based on file name or size or whatever parameters you're specifying. Absolutely. So here I create a new short name counter object. I invoke the pre-order method that we just wrote on the tree. I pass a reference to my visitor, my specific visitor. The pre-order method doesn't care that it is a short name counter. It just knows it implements the visitor interface. Um, and then when all is said and done, I'm gonna print out the counter um, so I can see how many short names there are. And if I run this, we should observe that it does pre-order. So Anne is printed first, which is good, then Peter, then Savannah, then Zara, um, and then there are three short names. Is that right? One, two, three. Yeah, that's correct. Good, good, good. Um, cool.
what I want you all to do, actually, let me, let me pause here for a second. Questions about visitors in this example. All right, well, here's then what I want you to do. Let me open it up so I can show you and get you started in the right direction efficiently. So I just opened up the visitors folder in the chapter 17 activities folder. Um, and that's what you and your partner are gonna focus on for the rest of class today. Um, what you're going to do um, is work through this. So it already has the visitor interface here. Um, we already have a binary tree like written for us. Yep, that looks good. Um, and then, you are gonna add methods. This is great practice of all this pre-order, post-order stuff. You're gonna add the methods pre-order, in-order, and post-order to that binary tree class, okay? Um, so, the binary tree class is completely written other than those three methods. So you just need to add those three methods, very similar to the method we just wrote together in the other class. And then here's the test code I already have for you um, in terms of building up a tree. Um, and then here's where I'm calling your in order, pre order, and post order. And here's what is expected. So this, the test is written for you, which is really cool. Um, so just because I want you to focus on the algorithms, not writing the test. Um, one neat thing I wanted to show you here is here, this is called a Lambda expression. This was added in Java 8, which is a while ago now. I think Java 15 just came out. Um, Lambda expressions are, are super common in some other dynamic languages like JavaScript. Um, sometimes they're called closures, sometimes they're called anonymous functions, sometimes they're called blocks. They are usually very concise. They don't require a lot of syntax. Um, there's a section in the text all about them. But rather than creating, rather than, oops, rather than creating a whole class like this, simply to really perform only one useful line of code, I instead can do it with a Lambda expression. So rather than implementing that visitor interface here, I instead do it with a Lambda. I basically say, yeah, I'm gonna make this visitor and there's only that one method visit. And so whatever data is passed to that, just like print it out. Um, this single line of code replaces implementing the entire interface, which is really cool. Um, we use us on the robotics team a lot actually, because it, it makes our code a lot cleaner um, if we're only basically implementing a single method. So anyway, um, so that's what's going on here. Feel free to explore it. Um, highly recommend becoming more familiar with Lambda expressions. It's something you're gonna see in a lot of different languages. All right, way too much talking for me. Um, so go ahead.